on News Talk 105.9 WMAL. O'Connor and Company. 637 on this Wednesday debate day in America. Thanks for tuning in to America's Morning Show. O'Connor and Company here. Larry O'Connor alongside Julie Gunlock. Are you going to do a big watching party tonight for the debate? Are you getting all the kids ready? It's going to be like Super Bowl. Is it going to be? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Coming up later this morning at 7.05, Matt Lowry. He's running for Prince William County Commonwealth's Attorney. And at 8.05, it's first day of school in Frederick County. And, well, things might look a little more like Montgomery County out there. Tom Newmark will join us at 8.05 to talk about that. Right now, though, he's seen his share of presidential debates, the good, the bad, and the ugly. He's the author of A Watchman in the Night. He's the one, the only, the irrepressible, our very own cow, Thomas. Oh, thank you very much. I thought you were going to say irreplaceable, but I'll take irrepressible, too. <laughs> They're usually one and the same. So, Cal, you know, you know the big... About Milwaukee, you're right. We're talking about Milwaukee, and you always like uh, to ask me about a song or something. So whenever I think of Milwaukee, I think of the old Blatt's beer commercial. Remember that? <laughs> I'm from Milwaukee, and I ought to know. It's draft brewed Blatt's beer wherever you go. I'll be here all week. <laughs> so... <laughs> to be, to, I want to be, you know, fully accurate for our listeners because you know that we're, we're facts first here on WMAL. Uh, as much as we love your songs, and we do, they're delightful. I rarely ask you for a song, Cal. You, you just, you know, plow right ahead and give it to me, like you just did. Well, yes, I, I can also do the old uh, <laughs> National Bohemian beer ad too, uh, for, that used to advertise for the Washington Senators, which yeah. in those days was the only thing worth listening to. <laughs> Yeah. So speaking of worth listening to, people can listen to the debate tonight at 9 o'clock on WMAL. What do you think they're going to hear? Is this going to be one of those, well, it doesn't really matter because Trump's not there? Or do you think we might actually have a couple of people emerge here uh, and taking advantage of the opportunity that the elephant is not in the room? You know, it's not really a debate. It's uh, it's more like a police lineup. you got these guys uh, standing next to each other. <clears throat> I'd love to see a real debate. Uh, I think that would be fun. But uh, Brett Baer and Martha McCallum are certainly going to bring up Donald Trump. I mean, how can you not? He's the, you should pardon the expression, elephant in the room, uh, going to be uh, turning himself in tomorrow. And by the way, you know, they're asking for $200,000 bail in Atlanta. Uh, in, in cities like New York and San Francisco and Los Angeles, Angeles, you got violent criminals who are getting out with no bail at all. That's why I think this thing is all political. As for the debate tonight, uh, Ramaswamy has already uh, stuck his foot in it, can, uh, you know, claiming that there were federal agents on the airplanes on 9/11, uh, which is kind of bizarre. But anyway, uh, he claims he was misquoted, but I heard the audio. Uh, Mike Pence, who's down at one percent and probably has uh, more experience in government than anybody else up on the stage, other than uh, Chris Christie. Uh, uh, he's he's not going anywhere. I think it's basically a campaign for vice president, depending mm. on how things work out with Trump. Uh, mm. So who's the strongest among them? Well, I think obviously DeSantis, but uh, Trump is never going to pick DeSantis after all the terrible things he said about him. So it's uh, it's kind of open season. We'll see. Yeah. Well, listen, if, if the most experienced man was always the best person to be president, then we'd still be talking about the McCain presidency. And Barack oh, Obama would have point. never made it to the White yeah. House. So uh, I hear what you're saying about Pence, but there's more to it than just what your resume says, Cal. Well, that's true. And uh, frankly, I've been an advocate for some time of uh, a, a commission to come in and do a complete audit of the federal government, top to bottom. Uh, every, every federal agency has either a charter or a piece of legislation that authorized it. If it's living up to its uh, promises, and if it can't be done better by the private sector, we keep it. If it's not, we get rid of it. We do that in business. We have a $32 trillion debt. I hope that uh, McCallum and Bear ask about the debt and how they would reduce it. Yeah. You know, you can't in Washington, you can't even cut the rate of increase in spending, right. much less actually cut the spending, because the left and the media say, oh, what about the children? Oh, it's racist. Oh, pe old people are going to be thrown out. Remember when Paul Ryan tried to uh, reform Social Security and Medicare, and the Democrats came up with an ad that showed an old lady in a wheelchair being pushed oh, over yeah. the cliff? 
I mean, that was ridiculous. But that's the kind of stuff they, they counter with. No program can be cut for, uh, as far as the Democrats are concerned. You mentioned Paul Ryan, and there's it's become popular. Paul Ryan was one of these politicians who said, you know, I don't really get into, uh, you know, social issues. I don't really talk about these culture war issues. But I believe you want those issues to be talked about, about bo- abortion, LGBTQ rights, the transgender issue. Uh, why do you think that is also important that, that uh, these questions be asked? Well, because uh, the public schools and the universities are being used as indoctrination centers to change what has been uh, acceptable behavior for generations in this country, without the approval of voters, by the way. The teachers' unions, uh, the the uh, university professors, uh, the, the public school uh, administrators are all pushing this stuff of a tiny, tiny minority. They're saying that all these books and other things that contain what many conservatives believe to be, uh, at a minimum, uh, age-inappropriate material and at a maximum pornography if you protest you're a censor but if you put it in the schools it's academic freedom uh... It, it's it's terrible and i i think that uh... to the extent that politicians can at least speak on it and decide whether this should be a federal issue or a state and local issue it's something that uh, certainly uh, republican voters want to hear about cal thomas you're you're right to point out that these are not classic debates it's really you know sort of a a, a, an attempt to get the soundbite heard around the world. Everybody's going to have their one-liner. Who do you expect to have the, the the one big one tonight? I'm I'm betting on Chris Christie. Yeah, I think that's a pretty safe bet. Uh, DeSantis uh, may try to fake warmth and cuddliness. I'd like to see that. But, you know, if you go back, what they're looking for, uh, what the left is looking for, what the Democrats are looking for, and what maybe some other Republicans are looking for, is possibly a 1976 Gerald Ford moment when he famously said there is no Soviet domination in Eastern Europe, and that really, really uh, uh, hurt him badly. So I think they're mostly looking not to uh, make any gaffes, but that's not a good way to approach a debate. I mean, I've done a lot of debates. I've done a lot of speeches. The thing is to take the argument to the other side. These are not my policies that are ruining America. These are not my policies that have given us an open border, a $32 trillion debt, uh, drag uh, queen shows in elementary schools. That's the other guy. Take it to the other side. You want to be attacking Democrats, not each other. Don't violate Ronald Reagan's 11th commandment and speak ill of a fellow Republican. I hope they're listening to you, Cal. I know we are. Thanks, Cal Thomas. Always good to talk to you, my friend. It's... Mic drop. <laughs> Love that. He couldn't 